Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, commonly known as FDR, was an American statesman and political leader who served as the 32nd President of the United States from 1933 until his death in 1945. A Democrat, he won a record for presidential elections and emerged as a central figure in world events during the mid-20th century. He directed the United States government during most of the Great Depression and World War II. As a dominant leader of his party, he built the New Deal coalition, realigning American politics into the Fifth Party system, and defining American liberalism throughout the middle third of the 20th century. He is often rated by scholars as one of the three greatest U.S. presidents, along with George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Roosevelt was born in 1882 to an old, prominent Dutch family from Dutchess County, New York and attended Groton School. He went on to graduate from Harvard College in 1903 and attended Columbia Law School. At age 23 in 1905, he married Eleanor Roosevelt, and the couple went on to have six children. He entered politics in 1910, serving in the New York State Senate, and then as Assistant Secretary of the Navy under President Woodrow Wilson. In 1920, presidential candidate James M. Cox selected Roosevelt as his running mate, but the Cox-Roosevelt ticket lost to the Republican ticket of Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge. In 1921, Roosevelt was stricken with debilitating polio, which cost him the use of his legs. The disability put his future political career in jeopardy, but he attempted to recover from the illness and founded the treatment center in Warm Springs, Georgia for people with polio. Roosevelt returned to political life when he nominated Alfred E. Smith at the 1924 Democratic National Convention. At Smith's behest, Roosevelt successfully ran for governor of New York in 1928. He was in office from 1929 to 1933, and served as a reform governor, promoting the enactment of programs to combat the depression besetting the United States at the time. In the 1932 presidential election, Roosevelt defeated incumbent Republican President Herbert Hoover in a landslide to win the presidency. Roosevelt took office while the United States was in the midst of the worst economic crisis in its history. Energized by his personal victory over polio, FDR relied on his persistent optimism and activism to renew the national spirit. During his first 100 days in office, Roosevelt spearheaded unprecedented federal legislation and issued a profusion of executive orders that instituted the New Deal, a variety of programs designed to produce relief, recovery, and reform. He created numerous programs to support the unemployed and farmers, and to encourage labor union growth while more closely regulating business and high finance. His support for the repeal of Prohibition in 1933 added to his popularity, helping him win re-election by a landslide in 1936. The economy improved rapidly from 1933-37, but then relapsed into a deep recession in 1937-38. The bipartisan conservative coalition that formed in 1937 prevented his packing the Supreme Court and blocked almost all proposals for major liberal legislation. When the war began, and unemployment ended, conservatives in Congress repealed the two major relief programs, the Works Progress Administration and Civilian Conservation Corps. However, they kept most of the regulations on business, along with several smaller programs. Major surviving programs include the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Wagner Act, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and Social Security.
with World War II looming after 1938 with the Japanese invasion of China and the aggression of Nazi Germany, Roosevelt gave strong diplomatic and financial support to China and the United Kingdom, while remaining officially neutral. His goal was to make America the arsenal of democracy, which would supply munitions to the Allies. In March 1941, Roosevelt, with congressional approval, provided lend-lease aid to Britain and China. Following the Japanese surprise attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, which he famously called, a date which will live in infamy, Roosevelt sought and obtained the quick approval on the following day for Congress to declare war on Japan and, a few days later, on Germany. Assisted by his top aide Harry Hopkins, and, with very strong national support, he worked closely with British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, and Chinese Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek in leading the Allies against Nazi Germany, Fascist Italy and Imperial Japan in World War II. He supervised the mobilization of the U.S. economy to support the war effort, and also ordered the internment of 100,000 Japanese-American civilians. As an active military leader, Roosevelt implemented a war strategy on two fronts that ended in the defeat of the Axis powers, and he initiated the development of the world's first atomic bomb. His work also influenced the later creation of the United Nations and Bretton Woods. Roosevelt's physical health seriously declined during the war years, and he died weeks into his fourth term. He was then succeeded by his vice president Harry S. Truman, and a few months after Truman's inauguration, the United States bombed the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, leading to Japan's surrender. Early life and education One of the oldest Dutch families in New York State, the Roosevelts distinguished themselves in areas other than politics. One ancestor, Isaac Roosevelt, had served with the New York militia during the American Revolution. Roosevelt attended events of the New York Society Sons of the American Revolution and joined the organization while he was president. His paternal family had become prosperous early on in New York real estate and trade and much of his immediate family's wealth had been built by FDR's maternal grandfather, Warren Delano, Jr. in the China trade, including opium and tea. Roosevelt was born on January 30, 1882, in the Hudson Valley town of Hyde Park, New York, to businessman James Roosevelt I and Sarah and Delano. His parents were sixth cousins and both were from wealthy old New York families. They were of mostly English descent. Roosevelt's patrilineal great-grandfather, Jacobus Roosevelt III, was of Dutch ancestry, and his mother's maiden name, Delano, could be traced to French Huguenot immigrant ancestors of the 17th century. Their only child was to have been named Warren, but Sarah's infant nephew of that name had recently died. Their son was named for Sarah's uncle Franklin Hughes Delano. Roosevelt grew up in an atmosphere of privilege. Reportedly, when James Roosevelt took his five-year-old son to visit President Grover Cleveland in the White House, the busy president told Franklin, I have one wish for you, little man, that you will never be president of the United States. Sarah was a possessive mother. James, who was 54 when Franklin was born, was considered by some as a remote father, though biographer James McGregor Burns indicates James interacted with his son more than was typical at the time. Sarah was the dominant influence in Franklin's early years, she once declared, My son Franklin is a Delano, not a Roosevelt at all. She also made him wear dresses and keep his hair long during this time. During his childhood, Roosevelt 
and his mother Sarah spent every summer and major holidays together at the Delano Homestead in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Franklin would use the Delano Homestead as his home on weekends, when he eventually enrolled into the prestigious institutions of Groton and Harvard, both located in the state. Frequent trips to Europe, he made his first excursion at the age of two, and went with his parents every year from the ages of seven to 15, helped Roosevelt become conversant in German and French. Roosevelt and his tutor were arrested by police four times in one day in the Black Forest for minor offenses that may have affected the future president's view of German character. He thought that the Germans were rude, as he noticed they were constantly claiming they were better than others. This would later affect him as president as he claimed that his experience gave him a deeper understanding of Germany than most diplomats. He learned to ride, shoot, row, and play polo and lawn tennis. He took up golf in his teen years, becoming a skilled long hitter. He learned to sail and when he was 16, his father gave him a sailboat that he named New Moon. Roosevelt attended Groton School, an Episcopal boarding school in Groton, Massachusetts. Ninety percent of the students were from families on the social register. He was strongly influenced by its headmaster, Endicott Peabody, who preached the duty of Christians to help the less fortunate, and urged his students to enter public service. Forty years later Roosevelt said of Peabody, it was a blessing in my life to have the privilege of his guiding hand. And the headmaster remained a strong influence throughout his life, officiating at his wedding and visiting Roosevelt as president. Peabody recalled Roosevelt as a quiet, satisfactory boy of more than ordinary intelligence, taking a good position in his form but not brilliant, while a classmate described Roosevelt as nice, but completely colorless. An average student, he only stood out in being the only democratic student. Continuing the political tradition of his side of the Roosevelt family, Roosevelt remained consistent in his politics. Immediately after his fourth election to the presidency, he defined his domestic policy as a little left of center, like all but two of his 21 Groton classmates. Roosevelt went to Harvard College in nearby Cambridge, Massachusetts, where he lived in a suite that is now part of Adams House in the Gold Coast area populated by wealthy students. His mother Sarah moved to Boston in 1900 to be closer to her son. Roosevelt was again an average student academically, and he later declared, I took economics courses in college for four years, and everything I was taught was wrong. He was a member of the Alpha Delta Phi fraternity and the Fly Club. While undistinguished as a student or athlete, he became editor-in-chief of the Harvard Crimson Daily newspaper a position that required great ambition, energy, and the ability to manage others. While he was at Harvard, his fifth cousin Theodore T.R. Roosevelt, Jr. became President of the United States. His vigorous leadership style and reforming zeal made him Franklin's role model and hero. The younger Roosevelt remained a Democrat, campaigning for Theodore's opponent William Jennings Bryan. Later, in the 1900s, his father died, causing a great distress for him, leaving Roosevelt alone with his mother, who was rather controlling. He eventually distanced away from her for independence. In mid-1902, Franklin was formally introduced to his future wife Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, who was Theodore's niece, on a train to Tivoli, New York. Eleanor and Franklin were fifth cousins. Once removed, she was the daughter of Elliot Bullock Roosevelt and Anna Rebecca Hall of the Livingston family. At the time of their engagement, Roosevelt was 22 and Eleanor 19. He graduated from Harvard in 1903 with an A.B. in history.
He later received an honorary L.D. from Harvard in 1929. Roosevelt entered Columbia Law School in 1904, but dropped out in 1907 after passing the New York State Bar exam. Many years later, he posthumously received a J.D. from Columbia Law School. In 1908, he took a job with the prestigious Wall Street firm of Carter Ledyard and Milburn, dealing mainly with corporate law. He was first initiated into the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, and was initiated into Freemasonry on October 11, 1911, at Holland Lodge No. 8, New York City. Marriage and Affairs on March 17, 1905, Roosevelt married Eleanor in New York City. Despite the fierce resistance of his mother, while she did not dislike Eleanor, Sarah Roosevelt was very possessive of her son, believing he was too young for marriage. Several times she attempted to break the engagement. Eleanor's uncle, President Theodore Roosevelt, stood in at the wedding for Eleanor's deceased father Elliot, as Eleanor was his favorite niece. The young couple moved into Springwood, his family's estate at Hyde Park, where Roosevelt's mother became a frequent houseguest, much to Eleanor's chagrin. The home was owned by Roosevelt's mother until her death in 1941 and was very much her home as well. In addition, Franklin Roosevelt and his mother Sarah did the planning and furnishing of a townhouse she had built for the young couple in New York City. She had a twin house built alongside, with connections on every floor. Eleanor never felt it was her house. Biographer James McGregor Burns said that young Roosevelt was self-assured and at ease in the upper class. In contrast, Eleanor at the time was shy and disliked social life, and at first stayed at home to raise their several children. Although Eleanor had an aversion to sexual intercourse and considered it an ordeal to be endured, they had six children. The first four in rapid succession, Roosevelt welcomed fatherhood, and he and Eleanor suffered greatly when the third child, named for Franklin, died of heart disease in infancy in 1909. Eleanor soon was pregnant again and gave birth to another son, Elliot, less than a year later. The fifth child and fourth son, born in 1914, was also named for Franklin. Roosevelt had various extramarital affairs, including one with Eleanor's social secretary Lucy Mercer, which began soon after she was hired in early 1914. In September 1918, Eleanor found letters revealing the affair in Roosevelt's luggage. When he returned from World War I, Franklin had contemplated divorcing Eleanor, but Lucy would not agree to marry a divorced man with five children. Franklin and Eleanor remained married, and FDR promised never to see Lucy again. Eleanor never truly forgave him, and their marriage, from that point on, was more of a political partnership. Franklin's mother told him that if he divorced his wife, it would bring scandal upon the family, and she would not give him another dollar. Franklin broke his promise to Eleanor. He and Lucy maintained a formal correspondence, and began seeing each other again in 1941. Perhaps earlier, the Secret Service gave Lucy the code name, Mrs. Johnson. Lucy was with FDR on the day he died in 1945. Despite this, FDR's affair was not widely known until the 1960s. Roosevelt's son Elliot claimed that his father had a 20-year affair with his private secretary, Marguerite, Miss E. Lee Hand. Another son, James, stated that there is a real possibility that a romantic relationship existed between his father and Princess Martha of Sweden, who resided in the White House during part of World War II. Aides began to refer to her at the time as the president's girlfriend, and gossip linking the two romantically appeared in the newspapers.
The effect of these flirtations or affairs upon Eleanor Roosevelt is difficult to estimate. I have the memory of an elephant. I can forgive but I cannot forget, she wrote to a close friend. After the Lucy Mercer affair, any remaining intimacy left their relationship. Eleanor soon thereafter established a separate house in Hyde Park at Val Kill, and increasingly devoted herself to various social and political causes independently of her husband. The emotional break in their marriage was so severe that when Roosevelt asked Eleanor in 1942, in light of his failing health, to come back home and live with him again, she refused. He was not always aware of when she visited the White House, and for some time she could not easily reach him on the telephone without his secretary's help. He, in turn, did not visit her New York City apartment until late 1944 when Roosevelt was president. His dog Fowler also became well known as his companion during his time in the White House. Fowler was called the most photographed dog in the world. State Senator in Tammany Antagonist In the state election of 1910, Roosevelt ran for the New York State Senate. From the district around Hyde Park in Dutchess County, which was strongly Republican, having elected one Democrat since 1856, the local party chose him as a paper candidate, because his Republican cousin Theodore was still one of the country's most prominent politicians, and a Democratic Roosevelt was good publicity, the candidate could also pay for his own campaign surprising almost everyone, due to his aggressive and effective campaign. The Roosevelt name's influence in the Hudson Valley, and the Democratic landslide that year. Roosevelt won the election, taking his seat on January 1, 1911. Roosevelt immediately became the leader of a group of insurgents, who opposed the bossism of the Tammany machine dominating the state Democratic Party. The U.S. Senate election, which began with the Democratic caucus on January 16, 1911, was deadlocked by the struggle of the two factions for 74 days, as the new legislator endured what a biographer later described as the full might of Tammany. Behind its choice, William F. Sheehan, on March 31, compromise candidate James A. A Gorman was elected, giving Roosevelt national exposure and some experience in political tactics and intrigue. One Tammany leader warned that Roosevelt should be eliminated immediately before he disrupted Democrats as much as his cousin disrupted the Republicans. Roosevelt soon became a popular figure among New York Democrats, though he had not as yet become an eloquent speaker. News articles and cartoons began depicting the second coming of a Roosevelt that sent cold shivers down the spine of Tammany. Despite a bout of typhoid fever, and due to the help of Lewis McHenry Howe who ran his campaign, Roosevelt was re-elected for a second term in the state election of 1912, and served as chairman of the Agriculture Committee. His success with farm and labor bills was a precursor to his New Deal policies twenty years later. By this time he had become more consistently progressive in support of labor and social welfare programs for women and children. Cousin Theodore was of some influence on these issues. Roosevelt, again in opposition to Tammany Hall, supported Southerner Woodrow Wilson's successful bid in the 1912 presidential election and thereby earned an informal designation as an original Wilson man. Assistant Secretary of the Navy Roosevelt's support of Wilson led to his appointment in 1913 as Assistant Secretary of the Navy under Secretary of the Navy Josephus Daniels. Roosevelt had a lifelong affection for the Navy, he had already collected almost 10,000 naval books and claimed to have read all 
but won, and was more ardent than his boss Daniels in supporting a large and efficient naval force. As Assistant Secretary, Roosevelt worked to expand the Navy, and founded the United States Navy Reserve. Against reactionary older officers such as Admiral William Benson who claimed he could not conceive of any use the fleet will ever have. For aviation, Roosevelt personally ordered the preservation of the Navy's aviation division after the war. Despite publicly opining that Billy Mitchell's warnings of bombs capable of sinking battleships were pernicious, Roosevelt negotiated with congressional leaders and other government departments to get budgets approved. He opposed the Taylor stopwatch system, which was hailed by shipbuilding managers, but opposed by the unions. Not a single union strike occurred during his seven-plus years in the office, during which Roosevelt gained experience in labor issues, government management during wartime, naval issues, and logistics, all valuable areas for future office. Roosevelt was still relatively obscure, but his friends were already speaking of him as a future president. He reportedly began talking about being elected to the presidency as early as 1907. In 1914, Roosevelt made an ill-conceived decision to run for the U.S. Senate seat for New York. The decision was doomed for lack of Wilson administration backing. He was determined to take on Tammany again at a time when Wilson needed them to help marshal his legislation and secure his future re-election. He was soundly defeated in the Democratic primary election for the United States Senate by Tammany Hall backed James W. Gerard by a margin of 3 to 1. Roosevelt learned a valuable lesson that federal patronage alone, without White House support, could not defeat a strong local organization. In March 1917, after Germany initiated its unrestricted submarine warfare campaign, Roosevelt asked Wilson for permission to fit the naval fleet out for war. The request was denied. He became an enthusiastic advocate of the submarine and of means to combat the German submarine menace. To Allied shipping, he proposed building a mine barrier across the North Sea from Norway to Scotland. In 1918, he visited Britain and France to inspect American naval facilities. Roosevelt wanted to provide arms to the merchant marine. Knowing that a sale of arms was prohibited, he asked Wilson for approval to lease the arms to the mariners. Wilson ultimately approved this by executive order, and a precedent was set for Roosevelt to take similar action in 1940. During these war years, Roosevelt worked to make peace with the Tammany Hall forces, and in 1918 the group supported others in an unsuccessful attempt to persuade him to run for governor of New York. He very much wanted to get into a military uniform, but the armistice took shape before this could materialize. Wilson reportedly ordered Roosevelt to not resign. With the end of World War I in November 1918, Roosevelt was in charge of demobilization, although he opposed plans to completely dismantle the Navy. Roosevelt was sickened during the 1918 flu pandemic but he survived. In 1919, newspapers in Newport, Rhode Island, criticized Roosevelt over his handling of what came to be known as the Newport sex scandal. Much more threatening was the fact that Roosevelt and his wife, then living in Washington, D.C., across the street from Attorney General Alexander Mitchell Palmer, narrowly missed becoming casualties of an anarchist's bomb that exploded at Palmer's house, which they had walked past just minutes before. Their own residence was close enough that one of the bomber's body parts landed on their doorstep. Campaign for Vice President The 1920 Democratic National Convention chose Roosevelt
by acclamation as the vice presidential candidate with its presidential candidate, Governor James N. Cox of Ohio. Although his nomination surprised most people, Roosevelt was considered as bringing balance to the ticket as a moderate, a Wilsonian, and a prohibitionist with a famous name. Roosevelt had just turned 38, four years younger than Theodore had been when he received the same nomination from his party. The Cox-Roosevelt ticket was defeated by Republicans Warren G. Harding and Calvin Coolidge in the presidential election by a wide margin. Roosevelt returned to New York to practice law and joined the newly organized New York Civitan Club. Polio While the Roosevelts were vacationing at Campobello Island, New Brunswick, Canada in August 1921, Roosevelt fell ill and was diagnosed with polio. The infectious disease left him with permanent paralysis from the waist down. Following the illness, Roosevelt remained out of the public eye for several years, turning his attention away from politics and toward his legal practice, and his various indoor hobbies, such as reading and stamp collecting. For the rest of his life, Roosevelt refused to accept the fact that he was permanently paralyzed. He tried a wide range of therapies, including hydrotherapy. In 1926, he purchased a resort at Warm Springs, Georgia, where he founded a hydrotherapy center for the treatment of polio patients. It still operates as the Roosevelt Warm Springs Institute for Rehabilitation. In 1938, FDR founded the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis now known as the March of Dimes. At the time, Roosevelt convinced many people that he was improving, which he believed to be essential prior to running for public office again. He laboriously taught himself to walk short distances while wearing iron braces on his hips and legs by swiveling his torso, supporting himself with a cane. He was careful never to be seen using his wheelchair in public and great care was taken to prevent any portrayal in the press that would highlight his disability. Few photographs of FDR in his wheelchair are known, they include two taken by his cousin and confidant Margaret Suckley, another taken by a sailor aboard the in 1933, and another published in a 1937 issue of Life magazine. Film clips of the walk he achieved after his illness are equally rare. He usually appeared in public standing upright, supported on one side by an aider one of his sons. FDR used a car with specially designed hand controls that provided him with further mobility. A 2003 retrospective diagnosis of Roosevelt's paralytic illness favored guillain barre syndrome rather than polio, a conclusion criticized by other researchers. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.